We continue on the multiple choice questions in the broad area of photosynthesis and respiration to recapitulate or come back. Photosynthesis is a process of primarily carbohydrate synthesis which utilizes ATP and NADPH2. It is primarily a sort of process which occurs in green plants and there is the, um, there are two important phases, light reactions, photochemical reactions and the dark reactions which are the biochemical reactions which is called the uh, Kelvin photosynthetic pathway. Parallel to that we are also see, uh, doing on studying on respiration which is a catabolic process. In catabolic process we have glycolysis that is a, it consists of the preparatory stage then the phosphorylation stage then we have the link stage pyruvic acid to acyl coenzyme A termed as a link stage then followed by Krebs cycle. The TCA cycle generates primarily the sort of a reduced coenzymes and ultimately all the coenzymes get liberate the ATPs in the electron transport system which occurs in the F1 particles of the oxisomes. So we have in photosynthesis we have photophosphorylation that is light dependent release of ATP. Then we have oxidative phosphorylation which occurs in the electron transport system, evolution of oxygen, terminal oxidation and liberation of ATP is termed as oxidative phosphorylation which is the last, last part of respiration. Both in the case of photosynthesis as well as in the case of respiration we have substrate level phosphorylation. The meaning of the term substrate level phosphorylation is ADP combines with inorganic phosphate to form ATP and the always a particular substrate can get simultaneously oxidized and reduced depending on its redox potential. So we continue on with relation to the sort of a multiple choice questions in both photosynthesis and respiration. We go to question number 1. Now question number 1 reads like this. In the leaves of C4 plants malic acid formation during carbon dioxide fixation occurs in the cells of A bundle sheet cells, B phloem, C mesophyll cells, D peroxisomes. We are dealing with C4 pathway. C4 pathway is characterized by the presence of malic acid. Malic acid is a C4 acid which is initially formed because carbon dioxide can combine with phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. And when it combines with phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase, it results in the formation of malic acid and this malic acid is formed in the mesophyll cell. Chloroplasts. Thereby, this is the place where carbon dioxide is fixed. There is, there is carbon reduction or carbon gets added up to form a sort of a 4 carbon compound. So among the choices of bundle sheet, phloem, mesophyll and peroxisomes, the right choice is mesophyll, hence the answer is C. Question number 2. Which characteristic pigment has copper containing protein? A. Plastoquinone B. Ferrodoxin C. Cytochrome D. Plastocyanin In question number 2, it is asked which is the protein which contains copper? Copper containing protein which is a component of the electron transport system in both in photosynthesis. Among the choices, we have plastoquinone. Now, plastoquinone is an initial acceptor of electrons after the photolysis of water. B. We have ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin is a component of photosystem 1. When ferrodoxin takes an electron, it is helpful in the reduction of NADH to NADPH2. Then C. You got a cytochromes. Cytochromes are a series. So you got cytochrome B, B1, C, F and all that. They are all present both in the um, chloroplast as well as in the mitochondria. If we take choice number D which is plastocyanin. Plastocyanin is a protein which contains copper. The easy way for you to memorize plastocyanin is remember C and C. So plastocyanin is a sort of a blue pigment protein compound which is present in the light reactions of photosynthesis. Hence the answer is D. Question number 3. The type of plastids which do not contain stored food material is A. Chromoplasts, 
B. Elioplas C. Aliroplas D. Amyloplas When you take plastids Plastids are normally metabolic that is they are involved in the conversion of starch to sugars so predominantly plastids are made up of glucose it is a glucose polymer which in the stored form forms starch and in the metabolic form it goes to form sugars when you take the choices if you take chromoplasts Chromoplasts are plastids which are colored orange, yellow and red in color which is normally present in leaves and <coughs> which is associated with leaf fall. When you take elioplasts, elioplasts are rich in oils. Alleroplasts, as you understand aleron grains, they are rich in proteins. And when you take amyloplasts, they are rich in starch. So, aleo, aleo, as well as amyloplasts, they store oils, proteins, and starch. So, the one, the one of the plasts, plastids which does not store food material is the chromoplast. Hence, the answer is A. Question number four: Bundle sheet cells. A are rich in PP carboxylase, B lack Rubisco, C lack both Rubisco and PP carboxylase, D are rich in Rubisco. In C4 plants, we have the unique anatomy termed as Kranz anatomy. In Kranz anatomy, we have the vascular bundles which is surrounded by the bundle sheath and the bundle sheath is surrounded by the mesophyll cell tissues. The question which is asked is if you take the bundle sheath cells the bundle sheath cells are rich in chloroplasts. The chloroplasts which are present in the bundle sheet cells show C3 pathway. Because they show C3 pathway, there is internal carbon dioxide trapping. That is, carbon dioxide from the outside initially comes in into the mesophyll cell tissues. In the mesophyll tissues, there is C4 pathway. The C4 pathway, during the C4 pathway, it, the carbon dioxide is quenched by an enzyme called phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. After it goes through carbon dioxide phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase, the carbon is again recycled. So the internal recycling of carbon dioxide is again captured by the enzyme ribulose diphosphate carboxylase. So all bundle sheet cells are rich in chloroplasts, which are rich in ribulose diphosphate carboxylase or it is also called ribulose biphosphate carboxylase or it is also popularly termed as Rubisco. So Rubisco, bundle sheet cells, chloroplasts and C3 pathway are associated well. So the answer is D. Question number 5. If the RQ is 0.6 for a respiratory metabolism, it could mean A. Carbohydrates are the respiratory substrates. B. Organic acids are the respiratory substrates. C. It involves consumption of more oxygen than carbon dioxide released. D. It involves consumption of less oxygen than carbon dioxide released. We find that we have a substrate.
the substrate's RQ value is given as 0 0.6. So, we are looking at the respiratory quotient value which is less than 1. Less than 1 with relation to carbon dioxide is to oxygen. So, when there is more consumption of oxygen, more of oxygen is used than the carbon dioxide which is released. If the carbon dioxide release is less, if the oxygen consumption is more, so under these sort of conditions, your RQ value will fall less than 1. Hence, RQ of 0 0.6, it could mean choice number 3, consumption of more oxygen than carbon dioxide released. Hence, the answer is C. Question number 6, what is true for photosynthesis? Choice A is reduction of carbon dioxide and water. B, oxidation of carbon dioxide and water. C, reduction of carbon dioxide and oxidation of water. D, oxidation of carbon dioxide and reduction of water. While dealing with the process of photosynthesis, we always understand that water initially gets oxidized. When you say water is oxidized, it primarily means liberation of electrons and formation of H plus ions is the meaning of the term oxidation. So, first we have is water getting oxidized. So, oxidation of water is also termed as photolysis, which occurs in the light reactions. Then B, we have is reduction of carbon dioxide. The reduction of carbon implicates that we have from a simple carbon, it can combine with hydrogen and oxygen and go to form a CHO complex that is different set of starch compounds which could again break down from C6, it could break down to 5 carbon plus 1 carbon or if it is a 5 carbon, it can break down to form a 3 carbon plus 2 carbon or if it is a 4 carbon, it can break down to form 2 carbon plus 2 carbon and if it again if it is a 2 carbon, it can again break down to a 1 carbon to a 1 carbon. So, this entire process is termed as reduction of carbon. So, we have in photosynthesis oxidation of, it involves oxidation of water and reduction of carbon dioxide. Thereby, the choice C is right and the answer is C. The reason why we have, even you take that, when you take Kelvin cycle, Kelvin cycle is also termed as reduction of carbon or it is otherwise termed as reductive pentose pathway. So, reduction of carbon and oxidation of water relates to photosynthesis. Answer is C. We go to question number 7. Which of the following is a 4 carbon compound? A is oxaloacetic acid, B phosphoglyceric acid, C ribulose biphosphate, D phosphonyl pyruvate. When you take the compounds here, the 4 carbon compound which is formed in C4 pathway is predominantly the marker enzyme or the marker acid is oxaloacetic acid. We have 
oxaloacetic acid or OAA which is an important first component in the 4 carbon pathway especially with relation to the sort of a C4 photosynthesis. Hence the answer is oxaloacetic acid that is the choice is answer is A. We go to question number 8. Photosynthetic peroxisomes are involved in A. Glycolate cycle B. Kelvin cycle C. Bacterial photosynthesis D. Glycolate, glycolate cycle We are dealing with relation to photosynthetic peroxisomes. In green leaves, we sometimes have an association of chloroplasts, mitochondria and peroxisomes. The objective of this association of peroxisomes is to conduct a process which is termed as photorespiration. The process of photorespiration has been discovered by Decker and Theo. So when you take photorespiration, the meaning of the term photorespiration is post elimination outburst of carbon dioxide. That is after light, after you flash, after you flash light in plant leaf cells there is liberation of carbon dioxide. So the reason why we have photorespiration is it starts off with an important cycle which is termed as the glycolate cycle. So in the glycolate cycle glycine is converted to serin and there is a link between chloroplast mitochondria and peroxisomes. So this process of photorespiration which is called the, which involves the glycolate cycle as the sort of a starting point is important to prevent bleaching of chloroplasts especially when there is very high light or if there is a possibility of a sort of a chloroplast damage due to global warming. The right answer is glycolate cycle and the choice is answer is A. Question number 9. The number of ATP produced when a molecule of glucose undergoes fermentation is the choices are A is 4, B is 36, C is 2 and D is 8. We are dealing with relation to glucose molecule which is undergoing incomplete oxidation that is fermentation. So during fermentation the only process which can give out ATP is glycolysis. And during glycolysis especially involving fermentation because two ATPs are used for the starting that is for phosphorylation and again you have got the generation of four ATP molecules because we have a six carbon glucose getting, uh, getting broken cleaved down to form two molecules of pyruvic acid. Thereby, we get 4 ADP molecules. So, derived is 4 ADP molecules, utilized is 2 ADP molecules, net gain is 2 ADP molecules. So, the net gain is primarily 2 ADP molecules in all cases of fermentation. The answer is C. Question number 10. The energy releasing metabolic process in which the substrate is oxidized without an external electron acceptor is termed as A. Photorespiration B. Aerobic respiration C. Fermentation D. Glycolysis Now the question asks we have the formation of ATP it is an energy releasing process wherein ATP is liberated. It is a metabolic process in 
in which the substrate undergoes oxidation it undergoes oxidation without an external electron acceptor so there are no electron acceptors when there are no electron acceptors the substrate is undergoing oxidation and primarily you have the liberation of adp this indicates there is only glycolysis which is operative and wherever there is no electron acceptors the process primarily relates to the fermentation process hence the choice is answer c fermentation question number 11 two nadh2 produced during anaerobic respiration that is glycolysis yields a 6 adp 4 adp c is 8 adp d none of the above when you take glycolysis and in case glycolysis is in the absence of oxygen you call it as anaerobic respiration so during anaerobic respiration when oxygen is absent the 2 nadh whichever are produced cannot get converted to atp because there is absence of oxygen you understand that whenever we take nadh ultimately at the end of respiration that is only during the electron transport system where along with the liberation of oxygen there is a generation of atp thereby nadh oxygen is absent so consequently this gets dumb and you don't have the formation of atp so there is no atp formation thereby the choice is none of the above that is answer is d so primarily it is a wasteful process because atp is not getting generated question number 12 an example of oxidative decarboxylation is the conversion of a succinate to fumarate b fumarate to malate c pyruvate to acyl coenzyme a and d is citrate to isocitrate now whenever we have the conversion of pyruvate to acyl coenzyme a carbon is removed the removal of carbon is termed as decarboxylation decarboxylation so the link between pyruvate and acyl coenzyme a with the loss of a carbon is primarily termed as decarboxylation so here the choice the answer is c question number 13 oxidation occurs when the conversion is from a glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate to 13 diphosphoglycerate b 13 diphosphoglycerate to 3 phosphoglycerate c 2 phosphoglycerate to phosphoglycerate d glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate whenever we have the conversion of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate to 13 diphosphoglycerate that is when you have one more phosphorus getting added there is a diphosphate phosphorus so when phosphorus gets added this process is termed primarily as oxidation so the right answer is e so in this process there is oxidation there is addition of phosphorus so it becomes a diphosphate so glyceraldehyde phosphate to 13 dip diphosphoglyceraldehyde is the right answer the answer is e question number 14 the exceptional difference between c3 and c4 plants is exhibited by the phenomenon of a 
photosynthesis b photorespiration c transpiration d crassulation metabolism if someone asks a question like what exactly is the difference between a c3 plant and a c4 plant we understand primarily c3 plants are normal plants whereas c4 plants are plants which are adapted to they are adapted to extremes of conditions like high temperature less of carbon dioxide availability more to stress and more to change so predominantly because we take photosynthesis and in the case of photosynthesis we are looking at carbon dioxide water chlorophyll light and oxygen we would be thinking that the exceptional difference between c3 and c4 is not photosynthesis but it primarily relates to another sort of a binding factor which is termed as photorespiration so if you take c3 plants in c3 plants they have a mechanism wherein they again capture the sort of a carbon dioxide post elimination outburst of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is caught internally by the c3 plants and they are responsible for photorespiration so in actuality if you want to know about the yield of a plant if you are talking about gross yield or what is the net carbon fixed in any particular plant it is photosynthesis minus photorespiration so the key factor here is photorespiration hence the answer is b question number 15 match the following on the left we have a is stephen hales b is engine house c is von mol and d is sachs on the right hand side we have the discoveries choice a is importance of light and chlorophyll two is presence of chlorophyll in plants c is product of photosynthesis is starch and d is air and light controls plant growth now when we look at the choices we find stephen hales is the first scientist to discover that air and light have got a role with relation to plant growth that's why among the choices we have a is a4 b1 c2 d3 and b we have a3 b2 c1 and d4 c we have a2 b3 c4 and d1 and d we have a4 b3 c2 and d1 now the right answer relates to choice a wherein it says stephen hales is associated with air and light control of plant growth then again b engine house really for the first to discover that light is light and chlorophyll as important for photosynthesis similarly when you take von mol c it relates to the presence of chlorophyll in plants and d sachs is related to the product of photosynthesis is starch all the four experiments have experimental basis and are can easily be performed in the classrooms the right choice is a answer is e next we go to bacterial uh, we go to question number 16 bacterial photosynthesis has choices a photosystem 1 b photosystem 2 c both a and b d none of these when you take bacteria bacteria which can synthesize which can photosynthesize are termed as photosynthetic bacteria examples of photosynthetic bacteria are clostridium and also we have rhodospirillum rubrum these are photosynthetic bacteria it has been discovered in these particular photosynthetic bacteria there is only the presence of photosystem 1 that is it is only receptive to 700 nanometers of light and beyond it and photosystem 2 is non functional here or it is absent there is only the presence of photosystem 1 and then the stroma reactions 
the answer is A. Question number 17. It's important that students exactly know what exactly is the correct formula for chlorophyll A. The formula for chlorophyll A is A. Choices C55, H72, O2, N4, Mg. B. C55, H72, O5, N4, Mg. And again C is C55, H70, O5, N4, Mg. And D is C55, H72, O2, N4, Mg. Now when you take chlorophyll A, chlorophyll A is the chief pigment which is present in all photosynthetic autotrophic oxygen evolving organisms and it is the primary pigment it is called the primary pigment and the primary pigment is has the formula of C55 carbon is always 55 then H is 70 H is 70 it is O5 N4 and it has a magnesium center. So, it is important to realize that whenever you take a chlorophyll molecule, carbon, hydrogen is the highest 70, then you got 55. Remember these in descending series of 5 and 4 and the center is made up of primarily made up of magnesium. The answer is C. We go to question number 18. Photorespiration in C3 plants starts from A. Phosphoglycerate B. Phosphoglycolate C. Glycerate D. Glycine We understand that photorespiration is a protective process which occurs in green plants. It is always associated with C3 pathway. Photorespiration is due to the presence of peroxisomes. It is linked to chloroplasts and mitochondria and it starts with a sort of a substrate which is termed as phosphoglycerate. So, a glycerate gets converted to a glycolate. And serin is exported to the mitochondria. So, here we have glycerate as a starting compound and we also have glycolate. So, here when you take this, it starts primarily from glycerate and later on to glycolate. The answer is A. Question number 19 asks you the size of the chlorophyll molecule. When you take the chlorophyll molecule, it has a phytol head which has got a magnesium, then it has got a very long tail. So, the choices are A head is 15 into 15 angstrom units, tail 25 angstrom units, B is 20 into 20 head and 25 angstrom units is a tail and C the head is 15 into 15 angstrom units and the tail is 20 and D the head is 15 into 12 and the tail is 25. Always remember whenever we take a chlorophyll molecule, the head is symmetrical. So, it is always 15 into 15 angstrom units and the tail extends by a factor add of 5 therefore, the tail is always 20 angstrom units. Hence, the choice is answer is C. We go to question number 20. The substrate for photorespiration is A. Ribulose bisphosphate B. Glycolate C. Serin D. Glycine When you take photorespiration, Photorespiration starts with a substrate, the first 
chemical compound which is available for biochemical reactions is called the substrate. So, the substrate here is always glycolate. So, we have a glycolate cycle which starts off in photorespiration in the peroxisomes. The answer is B. Question number 21. Photosynthetically active radiation is represented by the range of wavelength. Choice A is 340 to 450 nanometers, B 400 to 700 nanometers, C 500 to 600 nanometers and D is 400 to 950 nanometers. The question asks when you take photosynthetic active radiation, in which sort of radiation can plants synthesize or do photosynthesis? It is represented by a range of wavelength. And the farthest or the best pattern for wavelength in the case among the wavelengths is you have 400 to 700. Remember, we have studied about pigment system 700 or photosystem 700. Hence, the choice is in the range of 400 to 700 nanometers wherein we could have even a sort of a red, it is in the red spectrum, it enters into the red spectrum. Hence, the answer is B. Question number 22. Which element is located at the center of the porphyrin ring of chlorophyll? A is manganese, B is calcium, C is magnesium, D is potassium. When we take the chlorophyll, The chlorophyll head is made up of a porphyrin ring and the porphyrin ring is always associated with magnesium Mg. The right choice is answer is C. We go to question number 23. Oxidative phosphorylation is production of A, ATP in photosynthesis, B, NADPH in photosynthesis, C, ATP in respiration, D, NADH in respiration. When we take the term as oxidative phosphorylation, it relates to liberation of oxygen and the formation of ATP. Liberation of oxygen and the formation of ATP is termed as terminal oxidation. Terminal oxidation is a step or it is the last step in the electron transport system of mitochondria. The ETS of the mitochondria electron transport system wherein there is terminal oxidation is related to F1 particles or oxisomes. Hence, Oxidative phosphorylation is a term which is related to the production of ATP in respiration. The answer is C. Question number 24. Out of 38 ADP molecules produced per glucose, 32 ADP molecules are formed from NADH and FADH2 in the choices are A respiratory chain, B Krebs cycle, C oxidative decarboxylation, D EMP meaning glycolysis or mdan meinhof Parnas pathway. We understand when you take respiration, the exact place where all the ATPs are getting formed is due to the reduction of the coenzymes. 
The coenzymes are NADPH as well as FADPH and all the coenzymes get shuttled or they move through the electron transport system which is a part of the inner membrane. Now in the inner membrane we have got Christi, on the Christi we have got the F1 particles and within the F1 particles we understand for each NADH which enters through the electron transport system we have the formation of 3 ADP molecules. And for each FAD which enters into the ETS, we have two ADP molecules whenever there is a flow of electrons and liberation of ATP. Thereby, the maximum release of ATP in mitochondria in terms of the numbers of 32 ADP molecules is primarily related to the A is the respiratory chain. So, the answer is A. Max ATP are released in the sort of a respiratory chain in the case of the mitochondria. Question number 25. Which of the following is essential for conversion of pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A? That is when you are looking at the link between pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A, what exactly is the sort of a, what are the requirements? A, LAA, B, NAD, C, TPP and D, all of these. Whenever we are look, looking at pyruvic acid to pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A conversion, the process requires LAA, it requires NADH and it also requires T, TPP. So all the three compounds are associated with the conversion from pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A. Hence, the answer, the choice is, it involves all of these, that is, answer is D. Question number 26. In Krebs cycle, FAD participated as an electron acceptor during the conversion of, choice A is, succinyl coenzyme A to succinic acid, B, alpha glutaric acid to succinyl coenzyme A, C, succinic acid to fumaric acid and D, fumaric acid to malic acid. Whenever we are dealing with Krebs cycle, during the process of conversion of succinic acid to fumaric acid, there is the participation of FAD. Flavin adenine dinucleotide. It acts like an electron acceptor. That is, it takes an electron that is HH and gets converted to FADH+. So, this sort of a process is primarily the role of FAD. So, it takes place between succinic acid and fumaric acid. The choice is C. Answer is C. Question number 27. Pyruvate dehydrogenase complex needed for conversion of pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A is located in A intermembrane space, B cytoplasm, C matrix of the mitochondria, D grana of the chloroplast. When we take pyruvic acid, which is a very important intermediate, which is a very important end product of glycolysis, the link reaction between pyruvic acid and how it should be converted to acetyl coenzyme A requires that hydrogen need be removed from pyruvic acid. So, from pyruvic acid, we have the enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is an enzyme which is present in the matrix of the, of the mitochondria. It is present in the stroma or the matrix of the mitochondria. So, this is a special enzyme which is located in the stroma which is useful for conversion of pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A.
so the matrix enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase the answer is c now many times in krebs cycle as well as in electron transport system it's important that we exactly understand the name of nomenclature of the enzyme d carboxylase means removal of carbon d hydrogenase means removal of hydrogen we know oxidation and reduction loss of an electron or gain of an electron then we have isomerases wherein the structure of a particular substrate or gets altered or else there is a sort of a link reaction wherein two molecules can get combined together so depending upon the enzyme substrate and the reactant and the product as well as the conversion the name of the enzyme is given so it's important to exactly understand which are all the reactions in which there is the formation of the coenzymes and in which reaction there is substrate level phosphorylation in which in, in which reactions we have oxidative so phosphorylation now next question says oxidative decarboxylation occurs during the reaction of a citrate to isocitrate b pyruvic acid to acyl coenzyme a c succinate to fumarate and d fumarate to malate so as we understand oxidative in the presence of oxygen decarboxylation removal of carbon dioxide removal of carbon dioxide in the presence of oxygen primarily is related to the sort of an equation wherein pyruvic acid gets converted to acyl coenzyme a hence the choice is b we are dealing with question number 28 oxidative decarboxylation occurs during the reaction of a citrate to isocitrate b pyruvic acid to acyl coenzyme a succinate to fumarate and d fumarate to malate we understand oxidative decarboxylation is a process wherein pyruvate is converted to acyl coenzyme a so it is a reaction in which in the presence of oxygen there is removal of carbon dioxide the right choice is answer is b question number 29 which processes of krebs cycle are associated with both decarboxylation and dehydrogenation choice a is succinate to fumarate fumarate to malate b is malate to oxaloacetate and succinate to fumate choice c is alpha ketoglutaric acid to malate and malate to oxaloacetate c isocitrate to alpha ketoglutaric acid and alpha ketoglutaric acid to succinate now when we look at krebs cycle in the case of respiration the question asks decarboxylation and dehydrogenation that is removal of carbon dioxide and removal of hydrogen loss of carbon dioxide and loss of hydrogen is normally seen whenever we have the conversion of isocitrate to alpha ketoglutaric acid and again alpha ketoglutaric acid to succinate so during this series of reactions there is decarboxylation and dehydrogenation hence the right choice is answer is d question number 30 in krebs cycle second decarboxylation occurs during a pyruvate to acyl coenzyme a b alpha ketoglutaric acid to succinyl coenzyme a c oxalosuccinic acid to alpha ketoglutarate and d is malic acid to fumaric acid we understand the first time in the case of decarboxylation pyruvic acid to acyl coenzyme a is one sort of a step whereas the question asks where exactly is the point of second decarboxylation where in the second time carbon dioxide is carbon is lost so carbon is lost especially when alpha ketoglutaric acid
is converted to succinyl coenzyme A? The answer is B. This is the second decarboxylation step which occurs in the Krebs cycle. Question number 31. Chemiosmotic hypothesis given by Peter Mitchell proposes the mechanism of A. Synthesis of ATP B. Synthesis of FADH2 C. Synthesis of NADH and D. Synthesis of NADPH Whenever we are dealing with chemiosmotic hypothesis which has been proposed by Mitchell. This is a hypothesis which says osmosis that is movement from a higher concentration to a lower concentration across a membrane is primarily dependent on the chemicals. It is dependent on the chemio status of the chemical that is whether it can be oxidized and reduced simultaneously. So, this relates to all membrane proteins. in biological cells. So, this is a mechanism whereby the chemiosmotic mechanism whereby there is an involvement of an enzyme called coupling factor 1 ATPase. This membrane bound enzyme called CF1 ATPase primarily draws in a proton pump. There is a proton pump by means of which free hydrogen ions enter into a cell via the enzyme called CF1 ADPase. So, the proton pump as well as intake of hydrogen, this in turn generates ATP. So, the chemiosmotic hypothesis relates to initially the most basic thing is it is involved in the synthesis of ATP. This has been one of the very important discoveries in 1970 for which Mitchell has got a sort of a Nobel Prize. The right answer is synthesis of ATP. Answer is A. Question number 32. Pasture effect means A. Yeast uses oxygen. B. Krebs cycle occurs. C. Multiplication of yeast occurs. D. All the above. Pasture effect has been discovered by Louis Pasteur with relation to microorganisms. When you take yeast as a microbe, Yeast is involved in fermentation. That is, it is it involves it is involved in anaerobic respiration. So, when it is involved in anaerobic respiration, there is a small gain of ADPs. Now, if yeast instead of going on fermentation, it seeks an alternative path whereby it can capture oxygen. Fermentation occurs under lack of oxygen. We are looking at plan B. If yeast takes in oxygen, when it takes oxygen, it can undergo Krebs cycle. Yeast can enter into Krebs cycle because of the availability of oxygen. So, when there is Krebs cycle, there is the formation of more of ATP. If more of ATP is available, the microbes can multiply and there is more production of the yeast cells.
Thus, pasture effect means primarily respiration of microbes like yeast in the presence of oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, if there is a shift, this is termed as pasture effect. So, the choice is D, that is all the above, and the answer is D. Question number 33 During pasture effect, the choices are A, yeast biomass increases, B, more ADP is produced, C, metabolism is slow, D, all the above. If we revisit pasture effect, we are talking in terms of yeast, which is Saccharomyces. Yeast normally undergoes fermentation. If fermentation is blocked, yeast is given oxygen The yeast cells will multiply When the cells multiply Primarily, it gets more of ATP. The cells can multiply and more of ATP can be formed because it enters into Krebs cycle. So, more of oxygen, Krebs cycle, cells increase in number, they generate more of ATP. Though there is high production of ATP, the metabolic rate is low, while in the case of fermentation, ATP production is less whereas metabolism is very very high. So here though the metabolism is low, there is more production of ATP. So this process, especially when there is high oxygen available. This leads to increase in the yeast cells. N number increases and it goes very high and this is used for production of yeast biomass which can be commercially used. So, we can do commercial increase in yeast if it shifts to pasture's effect. We take yeast and we understand that yeast cells can be it can be primarily facultative. Facultative means it can exist both as aerobic as well as non aerobic conditions and thereby when we shift yeast respiration giving it more of oxygen all these sort of reactions occur and ultimately the biomass increases. Hence the answer is D, it, incre it includes all the above.